Hey all, and welcome back to the HFC playthrough of Super Mario 64. We're still in the basement today, and I think Flame has it out for us, because we're going through all the hot levels here. Like, we have Lethal Lava Land, and now we're going to the desert level, Shifting Sand Land. When the hell is air conditioning going to become standard in the UK? I'm getting sick of this. <laughs> Never, and even if we do get it, that doesn't change the fact that our houses are so heavily insulated. We're gonna be screwed no matter what. Oh. Yeah, it, it's it's melting hot right now at the time of recording. We're all kind of bitter about that, in case you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, and for th those who look at us and think, oh, you just can't deal with heat. You're correct, we can't. It's because, you yes. know, as we have... Uh, lived we have used to very just mid temperate climates and um, so heat is unusual to us too yes our houses are built to retain heat because it's typically colder um, but then the uh, the third thing is that when we do get heat it's humid heat and humid heat is a hell of a lot worse than a dry heat oh yes I mean, to put it another way, just because we colonised all those, like, Arab nations doesn't mean we're fucking suited for their weather. <laughs> no, it, it's fine. We just ignore our history entirely up until a few years ago. Just, you don't need to worry about that. Hey, governor, we're just out here pouring fucking scones and drinking tea, you know? I'm glad that's the stereotype and not the other stuff. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're exactly as you see us, and thank goodness we're here. We're right good. I have bad teeth too. I kind of have all of them. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm a collector of British stereotypes, in case you haven't noticed. No, really? <laughs> oh. Not have guessed that, Tom. Not in the slightest. Uh, you can shut up, Richard. You are way partial than me, Mr. Upper Middle Class. Uh, not upper, just thoroughly middle. Um, Richie, you went to uni. You're like miles above either of us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's fair, but um, d yeah, d definitely. Like into it, the way. Well, I mean, that'd start a whole conversation of the. the He's faltering. Throw UK. organic beans at him. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I officially, in terms of where I would sit in the class structure, I would officially be lower middle class. Um, but. Uh, yeah. British class system, weird as all hell. Wish it would kind of die a death, but doubt that's ever going to properly happen. You see, America has the whole race issue. We have that to a lesser degree. Like, black people in America are treated much differently to black people in the UK, I would say. Like, we have the chavs who try to emulate the stereotypical black person most of the time. But in the US, the cops just kill them all. Yeah. I mean, we have had a few of those uh, kinds of instances, but certainly a lot less. And, yeah, it's a, it is not a fun conversation to have. And I love this Mario commentary about Mario. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't get me started on the Italians. <laughs> It's fine, like, talking about that safe hedgey so you can get away with making fun of Italy. <laughs> oh, God. That got me started. Look, if you want to say a bad word, just say the fucking bad word. Just don't think I'm going to agree or join with you on it. Yeah, and, and don't be annoyed when somebody judges you or has a go at you for doing so. The way I see it is that a lot of the time, what we see online these days are, like, the actually edgy people. Like, yeah, a lot of what people say can be distasteful and that. But I would I would take that over the people who are straight out malicious but hide behind attacking the right people. Uh, it's, it's okay, we have a term for that. It's called woke scold. There's a new term for this shit every week. I've lost track of them. <laughs> the thing we can all agree on is... Freedom of speech, but not freedom of consequence. Uh, to a degree, but like when that consequence is will ruin your fucking life for an unpopular opinion. That's where I I would stand with freedom of expression far more than I would stand with someone's feelings. But that's kind of going to its own place there. <laughs> TLDR, race versus class. TLDR, flame is conservative. Richard, I am liberal. <laughs> I'm not conservative, I'm just... 
it's hard to say because I want to say I'm libertarian, but I realise that libertarian has two kind of sects. There's the ones that are like just I hate the government. I want to say what I want, which is kind of where I stand. But there's also the libertarianism that people remember the age of consent in every state in the US and it's like I'm a bit concerned about that shit so like I just say that I'm politically homeless. Like that one fucking Transformers movie um, with the guy who has the underage girlfriend and he has it like laminated like we have a pre-existing Romeo and Juliet relationship or some shit. Uh, yeah I still can't believe that that was a thing that somebody thought was a good idea. Oh yeah not joking that's actually a thing. That, that is, is a, thing. a thing. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, anyway, welcome back to Super Mario 64. <laughs> I didn't think we'd ever have conversations like this on the channel, but Lord knows, going through this uh, heat, you have to find ways to distract yourself. Don't worry, what happened again? Oh, a very rare boss. Oh, I've never seen anything like this before. I wonder how we beat it. <laughs> You, this might be a bit of a surprise, Rich, but you punch him. <laughs> really? Um, in the big eyeball things? Yeah, Nintendo like that. Mm, yeah. Wasn't that one of the complaints for the Majora's Mask remake that they turned all the bosses into this? Essentially, yeah. They gave it like big old eye targets when in the uh, original game you just kind of twatted them. And I really didn't like that. It made the bosses more tedious. They're not really hard to begin with but they're just kind of annoying in the 3DS version. That, it feels like just in general during that era, one of Nintendo's problems is that they had a very small handful of things that they kind of saw as like the Nintendo game identity. Yeah. And they would try to streamline everything, every one of their games to fit that. And if that meant that like, the Nintendo thing is that Mario jumps on the guy's head three times and that's the boss. That's the thing. And I assume that's kind of where they were going with Zelda at that time as well. I am so glad we passed that because it... Like, you can say what you want about Nintendo as a company, but I feel like they've been making some very positive strides for their games recently by specifically by breaking away from that as well. And even stuff like the film, which I admittedly still haven't got around to watching, but the fact that in the like early days of promoting it, they had a throwback to like the Super Show, that's something that Nintendo would never have done in the early 2010s. I, I do think that as a whole, yeah, creatively Nintendo's just sort of had a bit of a reignition in terms of everything um, in sort of really since the Switch came out. Yeah. Um, and it's been really nice to see because I think all of us would agree that we were getting a little bit like, we always know we're going to get a decent game out of Nintendo, but there's not necessarily been anything new or interesting in a long time. Um, so, yeah, it was nice to sort of have that Oh, we don't actually know what to expect anymore. There are games on the Wii U that I really like. Like Super Mario 3D World is a good Mario game. Better on Switch. Yeah, now on Switch with an improved version. But like, it's not the kind of genre-defining game that something like this game or Galaxy or now Odyssey is. Yeah. And that's kind of where Nintendo faltered and this was also tying in around I remember there was this weird thing going on in this generation where they were sterilizing Mario's branding so much that they were like denying that he's a plumber anymore which was really fucking odd it's like that if you were to describe Mario's character it's like there's two things he's Italian he's a plumber we got to wipe one of them off the map. <laughs> yo, ho, ho, how did that happen? He was born in Italy. <laughs> yeah, and I will say that I'm not bullshitting about that at all. Like, I, I remember Pro Jerry putting out a comment at one point, like, when he did a sponsored project for Nintendo around that time, he just did, like, a script where he made a comment about Mario being a plumber, and Nintendo specifically asked him to remove it because officially Mario is not a plumber anymore. And it's like... Why? That's such an arbitrary 
characterization to change and it didn't benefit the franchise in any way shape or form sounds more like sega and their crazy stipulations for like shadow and what though shadow was a weird one because like at least there was some sort of reason for that in that during like the quote-unquote dark age that was one of the things that a lot of the fans ripped into it's like shadows too edgy the game stories are too edgy and they're too realistic and people rip the shit out like say shadow the hedgehog sonic 06 and whatnot so like it felt more of an overcorrection than something that they literally just pulled out of nowhere like again with shadow i'm glad that they're going back on that it's one of them things that like i feel like there was this weird era where I feel like maybe there was this insecurity about characters being these goofy characters that, like, really lent into their characterization. Yeah. Very much so. And, like, maybe the modern era of, like, people, quote-unquote, owning the cringe or whatever is, like, helping with that. And it's, like, a side effect of that that now companies feel more confident. But, like, just in general, you need to kind of let... If your character becomes known for something, just let just roll with it. Yeah, like you don't have to adopt it into canon, but you know, trying to downplay it is uh, not really doing anyone any favors. It's basically saying stop having fun, you know. To an extent, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's where I see, at least in terms of gaming, a very odd shift. Because whereas I would say that, like. Nintendo and Sega and to be fair quite a lot of Japanese developers um, actually going for more of that um, freedom and let's just have fun and make the games we want to make um, like a lot of Western developers seem to be sort of falling into the trap um, that those companies were in during the sort of 2010s that Nintendo had of just sort of doing things because they feel that they have to and because it's what's popular and it, it's just leading to things experiences that people are just like I really couldn't give less of a crap about this I feel like the problem that modern AAA Western games have nowadays is it's not necessarily the same kind of thing it's more that the games are very overly focus tested and the problem you have with that is that when you try to please everyone you please no one yep. and a lot of the games start blending together like there's nothing inherently wrong with like the open world games where you go and hunt down missions on a map and things like that all the tropes you see it's just that when every game becomes that people start getting fatigued by it when people say they're sick of that they're sick of it because of overexposure more than anything and it that happens because some of these companies are afraid to take chances this has been a very deep video i gotta say D yeah <laughs> it's been a deep video with surface level political commentary and then talking about things we don't like <laughs> <laughs> Those two things are connected, by the way. I'm just pointing that out. But... <laughs> <laughs> to an extent, yeah, because the other thing that I don't like about Western gaming is that they have reasons for intentionally making a lot of the character designs very bland, and that annoys me. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with wanting to portray characters from different backgrounds. Just when you do that, you can still make the characters pleasant to look at. You don't have to have every character be this generic looking ugly character. Like, I don't want the characters in the games to look like me because I'm boring, I'm bland, I'm an ugly, lanky guy. I want characters who are cool and I can project myself as an idealistic view. And I would, ima like, I would imagine, and I've seen a lot of people from various different backgrounds kind of echo that same sentiment, that they want to be represented in the game, they just don't want to be boring. Now, see, I get that. I think what ultimately the issue there is, is that we just don't get variety where we really want it, because certainly having more realistic looking characters is great in terms of just general representation and having that sort of, I suppose, greater mix of 
sort of race and just sort of general look wonderful, but we aren't getting that whole um, look vibe necessarily quite so much because everyone's either going for that, let's make people look realistic and not have those uh, sort of extra hyper feminine or hyper masculine characters now, even though nobody's saying that they don't want those, it's just can we have both, please? Yeah. It's just like they've, they've identified a problem or they've been told that there's a problem and it's another case of like trying to overcorrect the issue and it doesn't help the fact that it's become such a volatile conversation. It is. Like even even right now I can picture the people you're talking about, the terms that they use and whatnot. And I was almost ready to associate you with them, but I know you and I know you know better than that. Shut up, Liptop. <laughs> <laughs> whoa! Hey! Yeah, absolutely right, but whoa! Hey! <laughs> it, it's the sort of thing that, like, uh, I feel like the kind of people who have more nuance takes on this are scared of saying it because, like, they don't want to be called, like, misogynist or racist or whatever, and they do also don't want to be called an SJW cuck. And so, like, they can't really chime in and um, when you get to the point where now it's impossible to talk about this without talking about like the companies that are brought in as advisors and that who have agendas because who will not be named here thank you very much no but you know who we're talking about the fact that what they do goes unchallenged from within the industry and they have that power now it's like the, when people are introducing characters from different backgrounds and that, it's not the players from those backgrounds who are being represented, it's the people who make a living from working in these companies and giving these advisory takes. That's kind of where it feels bad, like you're not serving the audience here, you're serving people who profit from taking advantage of the situation. It's a complicated issue. Uh, I'm just going to call this one the political episode. Uh, <laughs> well, or I would if it weren't for Flame just putting the names of the levels we cover. It's his playthrough. That's how he titles stuff. <laughs> yeah, I title stuff so people who want to watch a certain level can easily find the right part for it. Not your unfunny um, joke that you think is clever and that. <laughs> I liked it. I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, okay, but yeah, I, I understand what you mean. And we are like edging our toe into wars with sharks that I just do not want to, uh, you know, quantify as actual legit arguments because there is so much bad faith shit to go along with people who have actual issues with this stuff. And I'll just say it, I don't have a problem with Mary Jane's massive chin in Spider-Man 2. That's just the kind of guy I am. Yes, I think her model is a downgrade from the first game, but I don't think it's as terrible as people purport it to be. Yeah, I agree. The thing that frustrates me about that more is the fact that it's obvious why they've done it. The fact that her character in that game was based on a real-life model. Even though we have very high-quality facial scanning technology available now, it's very obvious that the in-game character looks significantly less pretty than the actual real life model who they based her on so it feels like they've made her unattractive for a reason rather than they're just trying to represent a certain character a certain kind of person there that's the thing though i don't consider mary jane and spider-man 2 to be unattractive i just think her model is a downgrade agreed and i mean this is i think where sort of we just sort of can bring the conversation lovingly to an end of just kind of highlighting just designers design characters however you want whether that is based on the model or um how do you want we don't need to you know do the whole look at this uh, lovely ai ultra super pretty version of aloy because this is the character i want her to be when that that's 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 not the character that has been created but we can we are allowed to have characters who are exaggerated and both are okay and yeah. let, let's just let designers design and we can you know make an assessment from there exactly yeah damn what an episode um 
I'm not sure how this one's gonna go over, to be honest. <laughs> what other hot button topics can we argue about? How do you guys feel about AI? Ooh, um, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> how about migration? Is that is that all right to talk about right now? <laughs> and ironically, you would probably get less vitriol from that. <laughs> Anywho, we're gonna kidnap a rabbit here, hold him to ransom. Give me a star, you little prick. We've done one of these already. I can't remember if there's more than two of these, and I also can't be bothered to scroll down on my star list, so we'll say that this is the other one. Okay, there's Mip Star Rabbit 2. I'm not seeing a third here. I mean, if I recall correctly, they, in the DS version, they introduced a hell of a lot more rabbits. Um, I can't remember what they exactly unlocked. I want to say it was like mini games in this, uh, uh, like it was like Luigi mini games in the castle. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, there were the, the white rabbits, which were rare and popped up at random. I remember going hither and thither looking for those guys. That was one thing that they brought in in the DS version that I thought was pretty cool. Like, the minigames, admittedly, they weren't anything to write home about, but at the time, having stuff like that on a portable system was very nice to have. Like, because you could just take your DS with you and it's something you could just boot up and play for a few just to kill a bit of time. And you had things like Luigi Poker, which was kind of funny. You had, like, the bouncing the Marios around. There was one Yoshi one that was... It's hard to call it a game, but it was like uh, you pull the flowers, uh, you pull the petals off a flower, and it's like loves me, loves me not. Yeah. I managed to get Yoshi rejected so many times in that game, poor bastard. <laughs> wow, art reflecting life, am I right? <laughs> hey, if I don't have the balls to ask her out, I can't be rejected. <laughs> I win, fuck you! Uh, <laughs> forever alone, but on my terms. So we have the second level to use uh, this beautiful piece of music here. Bowser has a fucking submarine for reasons that go unexplained. Well, I mean, he also has an airship for reasons that go unexplained, so we never question that. <laughs> well, that makes sense, but you never think of Bowser being, like, into nautical warfare. Yeah, but if you play Pokemon Ruby, you still have to put up with the group called Team Magma working underwater for some reason. Yeah, that, that one was always a little bit of an odd duck, but... Uh, Is it magma below the surface? Yes, but typically you would expect to find it obviously coming out of volcanoes. I mean, you would get underwater volcanoes, so that is a thing. Um, and I suppose the, the logic that you can apply to it is saying, well, they need to, you know, activate a underwater volcano to lift the land up to sort of be able to create that extra land, but there's probably a few too many extra steps um, to what most people would uh, be aiming for. Especially for a Team Aqua Recolor. <laughs> and to be honest, this is why um, Emerald was without a doubt the best version of those games. I would say so, but the original ones were decent as well, which is nice. Oh, I mean, they were, um, and to be honest, like, outside of perhaps the original Diamond and Pearl, just because of how slow they are, I don't think there's really been a truly bad kind of general Pokemon game. Like, there's been some that have been potentially more creatively uninteresting than others, um, and some that are performance-wise better than others. But I've had fun with pretty much all of them, to be honest. I'll just say that there's going to be a Pokemon Scarlet playthrough on the channel soon, and I I handed my spot over to Spa for that for a reason. <laughs> oh. I think it's been steadily great since Gen 6. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, like, I really like Gen 6. I love Kalos as a region. I'm really looking forward to po Pokemon Legends ZA because I want to see more of Kalos. Same, I'm glad they went with Kalos over Unova, to be perfectly honest. It's nice to see it have that second take for the people who didn't like X and Y, but, like, for me, 
I like it, but I understand that it was the original sin for a lot of people's problems with Pokemon. Like, that's where the technical issues started to show. That's yeah. where, like, the bloated engine started to show, as well as, like, the more simplistic stories and shit like that. I, I, I get it, even though I do really like the game. I suppose the just because obviously I will I will not be there for the uh, Scarlet playthrough, but just to put my two pennies in. It's the most fun that I've had with a Pokemon game in years, but performance-wise and visuals-wise, it's not really up to snuff. Yeah, I, I've heard that from a lot of people actually. But that's sort of where I, I sit on it. I'm just like, actually, I had so much fun that honestly. I couldn't have cared less about the poor um, physical and graphical performance, which I know should not be the case, and you should, like Game Freak should not get a free pass um, for any of it. But it shows that at least the ideas are still there, and they still can produce a really fun and enjoyable game. Yeah. It's just that um, perhaps they now need to, you know, put a little bit more focus in making it sort of more of the typical high-quality Nintendo experience that we are expecting. I find it amusing that we're talking about this during the one level in Mario 64 where there are really, really obvious performance issues here. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> My philosophy is, if it's fun, I will admit to having fun, but I can still point out if there are issues with it. I'm Agreed. not going to sugar sugarcoat you know, my opinion on something just to appease someone else. If I found it good, then in my eyes, it's good. It could still have plenty of issues, but, you know, at the end of the day, entertainment is to entertain, and if it's done that, it's done its job. Conversely, if I don't like something, I'm not going to pretend to like it just to appease some people who that would be annoying to. It's more about being earnest and not trying to pander a lot of the time. Really, exactly, being sincere. I value that above pretty much everything else when it comes to criticism. Yeah, and the thing is, is that there can be things that you can look at and think, actually, objectively, this is an excellent thing. I just don't like it. And conversely, there could be something that is actually absolutely god awful, but you still have the absolute best time with it. And both of those experiences are completely valid. It's just sort of understanding that that's where you land on it. And yeah. taste and uh, subjective opinion is a thing, and we all need to remember that sometimes. Except things I like are objectively good. There is nothing wrong with Sonic Adventure 2 whatsoever. <laughs> just got to what I mean saying, me. Good, you stinky and bad. Yeah, I'm glad you get it. <laughs> it took me a long time flying, but I finally came to terms with your objectively superior taste. Thank you. Now we talk about 06 being in my top five games next, and we'll all come to terms with that one. <laughs> oh, wait, what, what's that noise? Hey guys, it's Tom. Uh, got here a little bit late. Oh, I see Anti Tom is here. Uh, nice try, you're like 15 years late for the My Evil Persona reviewer character. <laughs> oh, thank you, Evil Or, but first let's thank the fans on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny, oh my god. But yeah, th th this is a bit of a, an odd duck in terms of the levels, because it's just kind of a, a water repeat and also Bowser's iconic submarine, is it? I'm not going to get over that. No. It's just so funny to me. But uh, I'm done rambling. This has certainly been a part. We'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye.